So we've got the Republican and Democratic response to that thing, whatever it was, last night. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Takeo Comfort Solutions. I know it's a presidential debate. I, 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 listen, I'm not going to join the uh, contest of pundits who try to be the smartest guy on the television to say the smartest thing about it. I just scratch my head and wonder if Donald Trump really wants to be the president of the United States. I, I, that's all I could think of after the first 20 minutes of it. He has a little bit of a TPP deal down. Nobody understands TPP. You don't even know what TPP is. Uh, other than that, I'm trying to figure out why he came to that thing ill-prepared and why he ran out of gas. She looked like she could keep going for another hour. Welcome in, Dan York State of Mind, for a Tuesday after the big debate that was projected to have 100 million viewers. I'm not sure that they're going to reach that number. Uh, and my guess is they won't reach it for the second and third debates because the first debates generally are the ones that everybody pays attention to. Let me give you a little bit of a rundown in case you're one of those few who missed it. And then we will meet our senior advisor of the Democratic Party and the chairman of the Republican Party here in Rhode Island and let them have at it. It'll be a better debate than last night, I can promise you that. Despite opening pleasantries, Secretary Clinton, yes, said okay, good. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton wasted little time clashing over who is an agent of change. Well, you haven't done it in 30 years or 26 years. Well, any number I, you I've been a senator, You Donald, haven't done it. You haven't I done have it. been a and secretary of state. And who is physically fit to serve as president? She doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. As soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates a peace deal or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee, he can talk to me about stamina. The world, <laughs> let me tell you. Asked why he won't release his tax returns, Trump deflected by raising the scandal that's dogged Clinton for months. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release. Clinton suggested Trump was hiding something and said he may have paid no federal income tax at all. That makes if me smart. If he's paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. Unprompted, Trump also addressed one of his persistent weaknesses. I think my strongest asset, maybe by far, is my temperament. I have a winning temperament. I know how to win. Clinton hit Trump's past dealings with racial discrimination and coarse statements about women. This is a man who has called women pigs, slobs, and dogs. Trump said those barbs were aimed at one woman in particular. Somebody who's been very vicious to me, Rosie O'Donnell, I said very tough things to her, and I think everybody would agree that she deserves it, and nobody feels sorry for her. Rosie O'Donnell? That's your guy. That's my guy. All right, thanks for coming. <laughs> Bill Lynch, Democratic Party Chairman, Foreman, now Senior Advisor at Democratic Party Chair, back in the game, as uh, you know from his last visit here. And Brandon Bell, Chairman of the State Republican Party. Fellas, thank you for coming. I appreciate having some commiseration uh, between parties in the state. Feels like the old days when you guys actually talked to and debated each other. So. I thought the 100 million people watching was for this show, not yeah. for the <laughs> Was well, I was, mis I, was mis uh, I don't know about that, but here's some here's some headlines <laughs> we should uh, take a look at here, just in terms of the nation's response to this whole thing. Last night, uh, Trump and Clinton clash on jobs, race, and temperament. Yeah, but I can tell you there were a whole bunch of things they didn't clash on that I thought they should have. Next headline, I think, is interesting. Hillary wins debate according to the Post, and uh, probably one more. They are CNN. Hillary takes round one. In fact, here's their data on their, uh, their 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 quickie poll, which is much more scientific uh, reliability than what Donald Trump is trumpeting today, running around with a bunch of accumulated online polling, which of course we know is not statistically reliable. Um, why don't we do this? Tell me what happened last night. Uh, I think that... Uh Oh, don't pick up Hillary. Brandon now. <laughs> yeah, okay. you know, I'm really glad they brought the senior and special agent to the uh, to the party because they need to bring him in. Um, You're talking about Mr. Lynch. Mr. Lynch, yes. why, why would you come back and jump on the Titanic? I mean, let's talk I, about local. I miss Dan. I told him that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you certainly don't miss me. I see you yeah. in court every other day. Uh, <laughs> well, you're doing a pretty good job buying time here. You want to explain what happened there last night? Uh, last it night shouldn't it take long. <laughs> <laughs> I, it'll, it'll take a while. I'll, I'll 
I'll tell you what didn't happen, what should have happened last night. Um, Hillary Clinton uh, had a good night. Um, she was expected to have a good night. She should have had a good night. She's been practicing for this for 30 years. Um, and uh, Trump didn't have the best night. Um, I don't think that he was knocked out by any stretch of the imagination. Um, that was not a KO uh, by, uh, by Hillary Clinton. Uh, and uh, she should have should have done it by all by all accounts with all her preparation and all the time that she spent um, for that moment and uh, she sounded rehearsed she sounded she didn't sound genuine uh, she's still dishonest she's still a liar she's still untrustworthy and none of those things changed and I think that uh, there were a lot of missed opportunities uh, by our camp um, a lot of missed opportunities uh, the Clinton Foundation Benghazi um, I, I, I can go on and on and on at the missed opportunities. Well, I think you actually came here more prepared than your candidate did, actually, uh, last night. I'd say maybe Brandon can be a surrogate at the next right? two debates. Yeah. Oh. I, I would be happy to. Your I mean, thought? The, 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 the issue really is that they set the bar for Trump about an inch off the ground and he still tripped over it. Uh, he was totally unprepared, and I think people have seen that he was not only unprepared for the debate, but in a lot of people's minds, as you're seeing from the results nationally that we've seen, he's unprepared to be the president. Um, his behavior was unbelievable. I I've, I've, was trying to think after the debate if I've seen a worse debate, debate performance. The only one arguably I could compare it to was when the Republican governor from Texas was running for president, Rick Perry, and said his whole campaign was premised on getting rid of three government branches, and he could only name two. Um, short of that, it was horrific. I mean, Hillary Clinton was, was fantastic. She was calm. She was prepared. Um, she showed exactly why she's prepared to be the president, what we can expect from her uh, in January. Hmm. Um, I don't know how to explain what happened with, with Mr. Trump. You could, it, it, by the last half hour of the debate, his answers were unintelligible, frankly. You couldn't even understand what he was talking about. Sean Hannity, Rosie O'Donnell, it was... It was amazing. And, and the good news like is it. most people pay attention to the first 30 minutes. Well, I, so you better hope so, there, I'll tell you that. It, I mean, it, you know, it's not really, um, <coughs> the, the substance does matter, don't get me wrong, but it's also how you say it. And um, everybody was conditioned, um, I think most people are conditioned to the way uh, Mr. Trump handled himself the first, uh, you know, 12 or 13 debates on the primary stage. So, you know, she's a professional debater. This is what she, this is what she does. So, you know, to the extent that um, she got under his skin in that last half hour. I totally agree with that. I mean, it's, it was very evident, and I don't think he necessarily handled it that well. Um, and I think he should have gone into different areas, like I, I mentioned just a couple. Um, so to the extent that, that that happened, it did. But he, had, he came out very strong, uh, and uh, obviously he was trying not to attack her and uh, keep her on her toes, and she had that grin that she... You know, here's what blew me away. Uh, Lester Holt, listen, I'm not going to uh, get on the Lester Holt, the predictable beat up the moderator mm -hmm. bandwagon. Been there, done that, and it's almost like you can't please anybody when you host one of those things. However, the wall, immigration, refugees, Syria, Charlotte, all missing from the debate. Yeah. Well, I think... I think I, and, and, uh, Benghazi, uh, Clinton Foundation. But your guy runs on the wall doesn't even bring it up. And on your side, he's running the wall, which is controversial, and she doesn't challenge him. Maybe she just thought that was strategic. Oh, I, I, I don't know it. I think when you're, when you're winning a debate as you just, one sidedly as she was, you just do just what she did, which is show people, particularly undecideds, by the way. I mean, Brandon and I already know who we're voting for, uh, and so do a lot of people in the country. These debates are, you know, interesting to watch for everybody, but they're designed, at least in my opinion, and I think in Hillary Clinton's opinion, to talk to people out across the country who haven't made up their mind, and that's who she was speaking to. You know, Donald Trump's behavior, the, the, the snorting, the, the belligerence, the sniffling into the microphone, the making faces, the trying to talk over her like a bully, I don't think that sells. I mean, we'll see. It didn't sell immediately with regard to the, the numbers, obviously, but there's still a ways to go to the election. There's two more debates. Um, so anything could happen. I mean, Trump has already announced today that he's going to hit Hillary hard at the next debate. I don't know what that means. I don't know how people will react to that. But I know last night Hillary Clinton showed that there's a tremendous, significant, substantial difference between these two people. And that's what these debates should be about. Now, if you were satisfied with the way Donald Trump comported himself last night and, and what I consider to be completely unprepared to be the President of the United States, then you should vote for him. Mm -hmm. But unless you feel that way, I think Hillary Clinton 
showed a lot of people and reminded a lot of people exactly why she should be the next president come January. Well, let's talk about the one substantial discussion that, that did go on, and that's <coughs> the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, it, it seems to me that uh, on you know a one-round ten-point must scoring system, he might attend Ninder on that in the sense that. You know, she was leaning supportive of that, uh, along with President Obama, who's really been working against both houses, both parties in, in Congress, against this, this plan. Um, and she has reversed her position. Now, I don't know if that was ba you know, based on more evaluation or juxtapositioning against what Donald Trump's uh, seemingly shilling arguments have been against it. Frankly, I don't buy his arguments, uh, but that's just me. I, I'm, not cer I'm not certain that uh, the kind of tariff penalty to China type of thing he wants to do is, is the right st strategy. But do you think Americans understand that debate at all? I don't think they understand the debate, but, but more importantly, I think the, the point that was made last night, and it was pretty clear, I think it should have been delved into a little more, is that she lied about it. She lied about her position about it, and that's what people, I think, well, understand. She lied about it. Well, she said it was the gold standard, and now she's against it. And, she, and then she denied last night that she was ever for it. Well, I think what she was saying that, that there was a, it was a wor that was her working when, when her she, worker her working momentum for it before she finally signed what off. What she on said it. and what has been announced and it's been reported and, and fact checked is initially when the proposal uh, was talked about, she was 100 percent in favor of an appropriate treaty for the country. And then when that those negotiations, which took place over months, were completed and there was a proposed final treaty. She said, this is not what I was referring to. There are things in here that I'm not satisfied with, and therefore I can't support it. That's, that's the history of it. And, and what's interesting is last night, and I think this is the problem that, that Trump is going to have going forward, is he was asked on more than one occasion, you keep saying you're going to stop jobs from leaving the country, so this is your chance. There's 100 million people watching. Just tell us how. Give us some kind of plan that we can rely on of how you're going to do this. And he never has an answer. He just says, it'll be beautiful. It'll be great. But he never has a plan. He never has specifics. But, but what we don't need are more five-point <coughs> plans. That's the problem, is that Hillary says, go to my website and look at my, look at my plan on this, look at my plan on that. And at the end of the day, what he's saying is, look, we've got to p penalize these countries. We, we've got to improve our trade. NAFTA was the worst thing that ever happened. He brings up these generalized points, and I think that people we understand that. We don't need that. any more five-point plans. Why? Because that five points are too complicated for America to understand I, and for us to actually execute as a country? No, but what I'm saying well, is, that, is to that, say that, I have so, a five-point so plan. Uh, we, we need to dumb this whole thing down to the point where we don't have specific plans anymore? We don't want, we don't want to hold people running for office accountable or for special well, there are secret plans. Well, there are secret well, plan. well, there are, well, a secret everything plan. about what Hillary does is secret. That's the problem. Right. So hold, that, hold your thought. If there's no secret that I got to break. Take a breath. We'll be right back. Stay with us. I will release my tax returns against my lawyer's wishes when she releases her 33,000 emails that have been deleted. As soon as she releases them, I will release. That makes if me smart. If he's paid zero, that means zero for troops, zero for vets, zero for schools or health. Yeah, you know, this notion that I will if she does is the oldest trick in the book. She won't, so he won't, so that's a non-starter. I think people well, smell plus, that, don't they? She has released her tax return, so it's, it's apples and oranges. But tax return for tax return. Right, it's apples and you know, oranges. Health for health, right. but tax return the, for emails? Emails, 33,000 of them. Problem, the problem I think Donald Trump has is we can have this argument and we can try to talk about emails versus tax returns. Is That's an issue that's resonating with people everywhere. And part of the reason is that it's been a nonpartisan issue for years. <clears throat> Republicans and Democrats who have run for president for well over 40 years have all released their tax returns. Donald Trump is the first one that refuses to. Well, here's and there's the a lot of reasons for that. But, but I don't think she's playing the right card in that particular argument, or at least it weighted enough. It seems to me, uh, first of all, I don't, I don't agree that the tax issue is front and center for Americans. I think it's kind of like a bo another bothersome thing about Trump that, you know, why, why isn't he transparent about this? 
it's not about whether or not he paid federal taxes to support taxpayer programs. It's about whether or not he's got major conflict of interest in his businesses uh, and whether or not they will be even reflected on a tax return. I'm not so sure, right? I mean, that, I, if, if I'm Hillary Clinton, I'm going after conflict of interest of the presidency. I'm going after a blind trust establishment for his business that he has not committed to. She laid out, those all, things. She laid out all of those issues last night. Yeah, but not, not, well, not, not as heavily as, as, as this notion that he's a bad guy because he hasn't contributed to the highway infrastructure with his federal taxes, eh. Uh, I think she's playing a dangerous game, too, because, you know, he, he hasn't been pushing the issue, and I'm not saying they have any kind of deal on the side, but this idea, release your emails, well, what about the relationship with the Clinton Foundation and the Clinton State Department? You know, and there's all kinds of transparency issues there. You know, your guy did come to the table prepared enough to ask. I, I, was, I was shocked that he didn't, well, and, no, I, and, I, and I, mean, I think that's going to come up. Maybe he's saving, he's keeping his ink dry for that one for the next debate. But No, but, it, one, of the, but one of the reasons that he doesn't want to bring that up, Brandon, is because that's going to then open the door to all the discussions about the Trump Foundation and what we now know, and I've been finding out more every day, where the Trump Foundation has been making payments to lawyers and others that are inappropriate and not allowed for nonprofits. So that's why Mr. Trump doesn't want to get into those areas, because that's fine. If we're going to talk about this, we're going to talk about the Trump Foundation as well. You're talking but about... But it's a simple... Th you know, it, I just don't... I agree with you, it's not... The election isn't going to be won or lost on whether or not he releases his tax returns. But it's a problem, and it's one that people can easily recognize and focus on because it's very simple. Everyone's done it. Why won't he release them? Whether, whether there's anything bad in them, we, we don't know for sure, but people certainly have a right to sort of take the next step thought-wise and say there's got to be a reason he's not releasing them. Everybody's released them. And even with the Trump Foundation, though, and again, <coughs> what do you see in tax returns that you don't see in those financial disclosures, which are thousands of pages from my understanding? But, I mean, even the state disclosures are pretty detailed now, so the, the federal, you can imagine how much more has to be released. But even if, you know, he doesn't, even if he's in violation with something with the Trump Foundation, with purchasing a portrait or something like that, these are like IRS civil penalties. We're talking about the Clinton Foundation and the emails uh, that emanated uh, from the foundation and the monies that were taken from different uh, various uh, countries. That's a huge issue for uh, whether or not you're fit to be president and the conflicts that exist there. All right, well, fit to be president, everyone's big on the stamina thing. Uh, as your guy, you admit, was running out of gas at the end of the uh, at the end of the debate. We're at talking the about the end of the debate. Uh, well, it looked like he ran into the wall. He wants to build like thirty minutes, twenty in. minutes into yeah, the I, debate. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kev, can you run the stamina piece here? She doesn't have the look. She doesn't have the stamina. As soon as he travels to 112 countries and negotiates a peace deal or even spends 11 hours testifying in front of uh, a congressional committee, he can talk to me about stamina. The world, <laughs> let me tell you. I, I thought she depanced him. I thought, I thought she literally uh, depends on that. I, I, you know, the first thing that came to my mind, and, and if I were on that stage, I would have responded to this, is that you, know, you can't mistake activity for accomplishment. So she traveled to 112 countries. Uh, there, there's, there are some significant issues as to what He's exactly she did. He's not talking about did. accomplishment. He's talking about stamina. Well, He's right. talking about the energy to stand there and do what she did last night. And I, I got to say, can I just say as a call? I never in my wildest dreams, and Bill Lynch will support this weirdness about me. Can you imagine I'm sitting here arguing and defending the in, in, in flavoring a, a Clinton support? It sounds like I'm a Clinton support. It's the only reason I came back to do this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and uh, I cannot believe that I'm sitting here with your awful candidate actually it, arguing how much better yours is. And I'm only here. I never would think and that. I knew, I'm here for one reason. I knew if we did this long enough, you'd be right at least <laughs> once. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a broken clock is about twice a day. Oh, my God. I'm gosh. only here because I do have a real cold, and this is a real sniffle, and I just want to get you sick. Um, so that was just, a, that's my whole goal here is just to make you sick. But the reality of it is, is that, um, look, I knew I was going to, I made a commitment to come today. I could have hid under a rock. I found a couple, and, and I'm here because I, this is round one. And uh, admittedly, well, um, I don't know what this has done. Yeah, I want See your the commitment that you'll come back for rounds two and three. <laughs> and uh, perhaps we'll have to pull you out from that rock. Here's a thing also that blew me away. Lester Holt, what was this question at the end of the debate supposed to be relevant to? Roll this. You spent practically nothing. One of you will not win this election. So my final question to you tonight, are you willing to accept the outcome as the will of the voters? Secretary Clinton? Well, I support our democracy. And uh, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. 
but I uh, certainly uh, will support the outcome of this election. I want to make America great again. I'm going to be able to do it. I don't believe Hillary will. The answer is, if she wins, I will absolutely support her. Uh, uh, the stories are that he's going to build a network to, to, to drive her crazy the entire time. But the, 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 maybe if Lester Holt or Donald Trump seized on this notion that he's constantly talking about rigged elections, mm. um, that might have had some teeth. But wasn't that the weirdest end of debate question you've ever seen? And the, it was, and the answers? It or? was up there. I, I'm trying to give Holt the benefit of the doubt. And basically, was he saying that despite all the animosity and the insults and some of the things we've seen during the campaign, would you be willing to put that aside and try to do and do what? Say congratulations. Well, I think I think more stay in, stay involved in some way. I mean, after the election and, and yeah. try to. I, think, I, know, I, think I, you're being I don't a know nice what he was thinking, reaching. but it was an unusual question. It's a very unusual. It's it. almost like there's an appeal if you don't win. <laughs> when we come back, Come on, we'll really? talk about who, uh, what constituency was most affected by that debate last night, Stay with us. I think you saw Mr. Trump being uh, not holding up well under pressure and it certainly just reinforced my view that she ought to be the next president. Uh, predictable from the governor. Uh, quick answer because I've got a theory for you. Um, Next to the warning. What, what, <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what constituency is most affected by last night's performance? Uh, I would say that the, and it's a pretty broad term, the middle class. I mean, I think that those are people who are going to play a major role in this election. I think Hillary the was trying to... The undecided middle class? Yeah, Hillary was reaching Which out to them Which is what, saying, 8, 10, 12 percent, depending on the libertarian flavor here? And, and, and frankly, those are the numbers that are going to tilt this election one way or another. Because one thing that we agree on, I think, is that this country, whether we like it or not, is incredibly divided... Um, almost everywhere, and that presidential elections, including this one, are now going to come down to four or five, maybe six states. Quick take. I don't disagree with that. I think that uh, the middle class, um, the undecideds, uh, I don't think it's going to change anyone who's supporting uh, Trump or Clinton. It's not going to change their opinion one so way So I other. asked a millennial that I happen to be fond of uh, what the millennial thought about the election. Who would you vote for after watching that? Trump. I asked why. No good reason, but he's a blank blank. And maybe that's what we need to get things going. Hillary is just a bad actress. I feel like Trump is himself most of the time, and Hillary's an actress who will never say whatever people want to hear. Trump doesn't say the, thing, the smartest things, but he has a consistent personality through the whole debate. You're still tweeting with Don Cacieri? There's <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I tell you. Not, wait till I tell you off the record who that was. But young people like authenticity no matter what flavor yeah. it is and that's and that's a big question too with the Sanders supporters I'm not suggesting that Sanders supporters are coming over to to Trump but I don't know if they're coming out for Hillary and that's a really big thing I remember seeing this guy's will young a, see you know this young person supports Trump but I don't know if that young person will actually vote the middle class undecideds are gonna hold their nose and vote I think I think yes, but the um, but the minority I think black that, vote that that helped Barack Obama, they've got to come, and if they're not active, yeah. this guy's in off better shape. And if there's one thing that uh, Hillary has in place that I've seen, five seconds, it's it's the national organization that's prepared to get that vote out on election day. So is the RNC. It's unpredictability versus vulnerability. Come back after the second one, guys. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate it. Final word. During the break, the guys were talking about what the role of Gary Johnson is in this whole thing. We didn't get a chance to talk about that, but we do have more time on the radio, of course, weekdays 3 to 6 on WPRO, and we'll tackle that tomorrow as well. Tomorrow evening, we'll talk to two young men who are in business in the African-American community and some of the lessons they are learning about the economy that way tomorrow night on Daniel York State of Mind. Thanks so much for watching. appreciate it.